What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of the 240SS Drift Build. Uh, today um, we're going to be working on the clutch. I have a little issue. Uh, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, trying to make it all the way up to a thousand. And uh, you know, if you're back, appreciate it. Okay, what I noticed is when I went to start it a couple times, I push in the clutch and there'd be nothing. I thought it was maybe the wiring uh, or the starter that went bad. I went to, you know, go to jump a butt, ended up realizing, and let's see if I can get a light down here. I ended up realizing that on the clutch pedal, up here let's see if i could find it up here right here there is a basically there's a little black uh, rubber piece that pushes in to this switch and when that switch is pushed in it will allow you to start the car well if you look that thing's almost non-existent let me get it out and show you what it actually looks like. I got it off and let's take a look. This, if it will focus on it. This is what was in there. That is practically nothing. Okay, here is a new one. Look at that. They have the old one and the new one. And that's what it looks like when it's pressed in. You have plenty, plenty of padding to push in on that switch. After doing some thinking, a lot of times this hole where the fork goes through, it ends up, there's a plastic piece, either breaks or the hole gets kind of oval i want to go ahead and take the old pedal out and check and see if it's you know it has any of those issues if it does i'm going to switch it with this one and right here is where we took the little pad out the you know that we just did i'll put that back in if we didn't but first thing we need to do is take off the negative battery cable With two 12s, if you use a small quarter inch uh, ratchet, you can get inside and get both of those off. You could just barely get it in there. I had to take the top off to get it off. Okay, so that's all we need for here. Now we need to go inside the car, go under and take the fork off. The fork off will allow us to pull the massive cylinder, these two screws are actually what those two screws are we'll be able to pull it off i'm just going to leave it sitting there uh sitting up i don't want the really spill over though it should be fine and then i believe i have to look i believe there's another bolt up here or something so we could take this whole thing off let's get under here see what you can see there was the the clip was up under here way up underneath I think you can you see it there is one bolt that does bolt that holds this clutch uh, this clutch pedal on then there's these there's a sensor here and the sensor down here I'm gonna take or unplug both of these that way, I'll be able to go ahead and get this out. I pulled out the mass of the cylinder a little bit further and the fork, just so it wasn't fighting with there. I was gonna just kind of leave it sitting there, but pulling the pedal out, it might end up hitting the fork. So, took that out. I got the top bolt, which is a 12. A bolt there that goes up on the very top. I didn't take the 
sensors out yet. So I figure if I can pull the pedal off, it might give me a little more room to be able to pull those off. I have both pedals out now. So able to get the sensors off. And looking at the hole, it doesn't look really that bad. Let's take a look at this. You see, this is torn up a little bit. That could cause a little issue, but it's not cracked. It's not broken. So that really should still be good in there. Doesn't look doesn't look oval at all. Notice with the new pedal, it does not come with this plastic brace. Why, I don't know, but it doesn't. But everything seems to look okay on this. So I might just go ahead and put this one back in. Let's see if I could show you this time. All right. So holding the, you can see right here, you have this kind of extra play. So sometimes, say so like the pedals, you know, you push in, you have here, there's just this little extra play it has, which ends up if you can see it it ends up kind of you know playing with this sensor here and then you have the sensor down here so it ends up getting pushed back up but there's just that little bit of extra play so say like on the new one you have here there it's all tight there's no extra play at all. And that is probably due to the spring, I would imagine, the spring getting worn out. So maybe if you, you know, buy and replace the spring on your old one, you can see how this one's kind of bowing out a bit. That one is too, I guess that's not it. Well. I'm assuming it, it, it may be this uh, spring that's actually gotten loose. I know sometimes if there's some extra play, the hole can oval out, but that's not really the case on this old one. And I know you can, you could end up adjusting your, I guess the sense where your position of the sensor hits to take some of that play off. But I think that would, that's actually kind of, I would just say needlessly uh, engaging it quicker. Uh, it's kind of a Band-Aid fix. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this new one on. So I need to get these sensors off the old one and put them on the new. I know the lighting's not the best here. I gotta work on getting a uh, lighting solution, but I'm gonna take the pad that I put on this old one temporarily going to put it on back on the new one that sits there well and then go ahead and get these sensors off well I swapped over I went ahead and took off this plastic piece on this since it was on there might as well uh, swapped over the sensors I pretty, I, you know, I loosened this one, un just loosened it enough and then unscrewed it, then tightened it back on this one and then just torqued it down. So they're pretty much in the same spot. And now I can, well, I'm gonna sell that. I don't need that. Uh, but I will probably buy a new plastic bushing for this before I sell it. That way it's more complete and you know, Putting it back in the car is the same as, uh, you know, how you took it out. 
I'm gonna weasel it up in there and put these through, you know, the holes, plug in the sensors, and then bolt up the top bolt here, and then put back the mass cylinder. Okay, just some word of advice that when you are putting this back in, I put it back in, got it through the holes over here, and I just put you know the nuts on uh, just you know a little bit so I could still move it around that held it from falling out then I put the sensors in and basically what happens let's see is if you have that in it could still kind of do all this but when you get the sensor in on this side and on this side it kind of holds it up and then I was able to prop it up and put this, uh, that last bolt in. Now that I got that tightened down, now I'm gonna take these off, put the master cylinder back in, make sure the fork is in there and tighten it all up. Once you have it all, you know, buttoned up, tightened up over, over on there, you know, put on your battery and the whole job, if you're not filming the whole job maybe take 20 minutes possibly 30 uh, just depending on how easy it is for you to get up in there and do that stuff and run the mass cylinder but that is it let's see how the clutch pedal feels all right let's push down that feels good there's no squeaking like it used to squeak change out your clutch uh, pedal it's it's a lot better it helps and uh, yeah stay tuned for more uh, we're gonna have uh, probably the next video we're gonna do some stuff on that <laughs>